There are a number of books that are immensely great and important that everybody really should read, and one of them is Machiavelli's work, The Prince. The Italian is known as Il Principe. It means the Duke or the Prince or the Ruler, really. And what is so great about this book, which was written around 1510, but only published in 1527, is that it really started its life as a job application. Niccolo Machiavelli, who at this stage was about 40 years old, had been a civil servant in Florence and he had loads of experience from travelling around. Now he'd fallen out of favour, he'd been tortured and he wanted to get his job back. For that reason he wrote a job application. He wrote it to the Medicis who had come back after a while uh, abroad uh, where they had been in exile and he was trying to really basically sell himself. And he was trying to do that by telling the new prince how he should react, how a new prince should behave. Now, a lot of people these days will talk about being Machiavellian, being ruthless, being a hard-nosed individual who basically doesn't give two tosses about uh, what the ethics would be, how you should behave, for whom really the goal justifies the means. Now, there are elements of that in Machiavelli. He does say in this book that it's better to be feared than loved. And the book is basically a whole list of aphorisms, but also analysis of what politics is really like. In some ways, Machiavelli, when you read his other books, is very much a Democrat. He says that people should be allowed to veto legislation. He wrote a great book about Livius, where he talks about how important it is that popular power can hold the prince in check. But in this particular book, he looks not just at how a ruler should could behave, it should behave if he wants to get power, he also has a description of what politics is really like uh, in those days. In some ways, that can still be used. Now, if we can take just sort of two examples from this fantastic little book. It is very, very short. It's probably about 30,000 words, and it's divided into into a number of chapters. All the chapters, by the way, had Latin headlines, uh, and then the rest of the book was written in Italian. Um, nowadays, I should say that some of these headlines are actually um, written over the doors in the cabinet office in, in number 10 Downing Street. One of the captions read that you should, um, it is always more difficult, always impossible almost, to change a nation because those who do well under the old system will be reluctant to give it up, whereas those who are likely to do well under the new systems don't really want to take their chances. That's just one of the lines. But the other lines is when he talks about how you should do if you get into power. What is the secret to being a successful politician? How do you start off? And he writes in The Prince that when you get into power, you should make a list of all the crimes you have to commit, and then you have to do them quickly, and preferably, you have to get somebody else to do it. So, for example, if we could take a current example, somebody has just been elected prime minister and there is a crisis going on. So he gets other people to do the dirty work. He makes a list of all the dirty work that has to be done. And then he asks a number of minions, if you like, how to deal with it or to deal with that, to do all the popular, unpopular things. So if you were, for example, Prime Minister of Britain, then you might get your Foreign Secretary or your Health Secretary to say all the unpopular things that need to be said. Do all the unpopular things that need to be done. And then afterwards, when it's all done, you get rid of them. Machiavelli talks about uh, Cesare Borgia, who is the, uh, the main character in the book. Uh, he was a ruthless individual. He was the son, the illegitimate son of a Pope. And his parental connections meant that he was doing rather well, at least at first. Um, so Cesare Borgia conquers a town. He has a Spanish individual called Ramiro uh, do a number of these terrible things that have to be done. Once Ramiro has done all the terrible things, Machiavelli writes that Cesare Borgia has him killed and leaves the corpse out in the square. And people then praise Cesare Borgia for having gotten rid of this terrible individual. And Cesare Borgia can enjoy the fruits of his labourers, or Ramiro's labourers, and, and rest assured that all the terrible crimes that need to be committed to solidify his power uh, have been committed. 
one of the er elements that uh, Machiavelli talks about in this book is the sort of like the key, the very key to staying in pow power. He has a line in Italian which is mantenere lo stato. And mantenere lo stato is basically to maintain your status or your your power. And everything that a, that a prince has to do is to, at the end of the day, maintain his powers. And that can be a very difficult thing to do. Machiavelli in the last chapter of the book, talks about how all our lives are ruled by two things, uh, virtu, which basically means sort of prowess, and fortuna. And he says, fortuna, or fortune, he says, fortuna e una donna. Fortune is a woman. And then he has a number of remarks that a lot of people have found rather sexist, in fact, where he says, but if you really want to live with Fortuna, who's described in many ways as this sort of Italian woman, then you need to be a little bit harsh. You can't just sort of give way and you have to stand your ground. And he talks about how only really young men who have that virtu, that prowess, will be able to succeed. But at some stage, Fortuna will get the upper hand and luck will run out. It's sort of like a, a, a basic theme, really, in, in a lot of Machiavelli's writing. He's got a lot, a lot of sort of very powerful women he's, he's writing about. Belfagor he, he is, is a, a short piece that he wrote, which is basically a, um, a novel um, about uh, the, the ongoings of politics at that time. Machiavelli also wrote plays, so his political philosophy is only part of it. But the important thing in the book here is that it really is a handbook in how to run a country, whether a big country or a small country. Um, when people later on in Italy were fighting against the fascists, uh, Antonio Gramsci, the Italian Marxist and, and founder of the Italian Communist Party, said that people should read Machiavelli because Machiavelli had described what power is really like, what politics is really like. And he also wrote a book called The New Prince, where he uh, likens uh, the rebels and the partisans uh, that he was among uh, to the prince, because they need to do everything they can to get uh, rid of Mussolini. At the same time, Mussolini actually wrote his doctoral dissertation uh, about Machiavelli, and he says, I, I, I clear my throat with Machiavelli every morning. So whether you are from the communist left, as Antonio Gramsci, or on the fascist right, as... as um, um, Mussolini, you both read um, Niccolò Machiavelli. Now I'll just finish this off by mentioning uh, the last chapter, one of the last chapters, where he talks about the most important thing for a politician. And that most important thing for a politician is to select your advisors. He has a wonderful line where he says that the quality of a ruler is based on the quality of his advisors. The individual who is able to choose advisors who can, to whom he can delegate powers, who is able to find ones who can trust, the individual who is able and willing to listen, he is likely to be the politician who will maintenere lo stato, who will maintain his power and be successful. So yes, this book was written as a job application about 500 years ago, and yet it is still a book that anyone who aspires to great things should read. It's not an easy read. It's not necessarily a nice read. In fact, I would hope that you disagree with Machiavelli. But he is somebody that you can but admire. In some ways, I would say, I hate Machiavelli. But I hate him on my knees. <laughs>